I call this meeting of the Connor Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that the meeting was duly called, and that the notice of the meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The time is 6 o'clock. Uh, if you join me in standing, Mrs. Bush is going to lead us in the invocation, and I'll lead us in the pledges. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to gather today to uh, honor our substitutes and to have the opportunity to meet and make decisions that impact everyday lives of our students and staff. Thank you that they have entrusted us to do this, and I pray that you give us wisdom as we go forward. In your son's name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. <coughs> Thank you, Mrs. Bush and Mr. Williams. Um, item 2A, Special District Recognition, Dr. Stockton. Okay, at this time I want to introduce uh, Dr. Chris Hines, our Deputy Superintendent, to introduce this item. Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. <clears throat> the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees awards ambassador awards to recognize individuals for their positive contributions to campus life and to campus climate. And tonight, it is an honor to bring forth to you for your recognition as ambassadors, uh, these award recipients uh, who are represent a group of individuals that play a vital role in the success of our schools. Uh, as you know, from as life goes on and any day and at any time someone can be absent because they're sick or they have a sick child or things go on and we have when key personnel are out um, we have our substitute teachers that come in and play a vital role and they have a challenging and but they also serve an essential function in the day-to-day -day operations of our campuses and without them Without our substitute teachers, we would be limited in what we could do in serving our students' educational needs. And so tonight, we bring forward uh, for you to uh, recognize uh, some outstanding substitute teachers from our campuses. And I know Mr. Kidd and Mr. Huber are going to come forward to help present these uh, recognitions. And so when, when we call out your name, if you would come forward uh, to receive their recognition. Yes. If I could say something, this is one of those nights, it's just uh, exciting. I feel blessed and honored to be part of the Conroe Independent School District. I can't tell you how much we appreciate uh, our substitute teachers. Believe it or not, there's almost approximately 2,000 substitute teachers in our district, and tonight we recognize 15 of those that are part of our team. And uh, I can't tell you, just being blessed to have kids raised in the, in, the, in the district, you know, how it feels when they come home. And we had a substitute teacher today, and she was great, or he was great. You know, you guys uh, just are part of the team. And you're, like we said, vital to the district, vital to be called at any time. And, and I can't tell you how much we appreciate all of the substitute teachers, but especially these 15 who are not just, you know, every day or so, but are part of the schools on a just a, a consistent basis. And you make uh, make everybody's job so much easier because as far as instruction goes, you keep that continuity and that is so important uh, for so many different reasons for our students that we are extremely thankful and it's our privilege to honor you tonight. <clears throat> well, I've, I've obviously never been one that's afraid of a mic, so I'll take the opportunity to, to say thank you as well. Uh, I, big time part of the team. You know, it, it is a substitute teacher, but it certainly is a part of a team. I know that uh, when the principals get the calls and, and the notices that so-and-so is going to be missing, I'm sure that they you know, have that, that first panic attack, but then they realize that they've got some people that they can count on, and that's you guys. And we really appreciate you stepping up for whatever reason. I'm sure if we allow the principals to give the reasons why they have substitute teachers, we'd be here for the rest of the night. <laughs> But we're not going to do that. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. We appreciate you. 
All right, so when we when we call your name, if you would come forward, and um, we'll have a little plaque for you. And then I also want to recognize uh, the principals that are here tonight. So many of our principals were able to make it, and so we appreciate that. Uh, first from Austin Elementary is Kimberly Weatherson, and the principal there is Dr. Serena Pearson. And Stay up there. Stay up here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I get it. Only a little trick. All right. Next is Jean Liga from Burnham Woods Elementary School. Dr. Christine Butler, principal. I know Dr. Butler too. All right. <laughs> Next up, we have Debbie Harbin from Broadway Elementary School, Principal Nikki Conley. Next, we have Bonnie Hunley from Giesinger Elementary School, Becky Page, Principal. From Hawk Academic Alternative High School, Beth Ringwald, Paula Nicolini, Principal. From Kaufman Elementary School, Penny Ward, Tina Oliver, Principal. From Mitchell Intermediate School is Terry Parking, Parkening, Paula Klepeski, Principal. <laughs> Next is Monty Myers from Oak Ridge High School, Tommy Johnson, Principal. From Wright Elementary, Deb Stewart, Megan Burnham, Principal. <laughs> Next is Sonia Ostrander from San Jacinto Elementary School, Renee O'Neill, Principal. From Travis Intermediate School, Quentin Haynes, Tamika Taylor, Principal. <laughs> From the Woodlands College Park High School, Mary Hoskins, Principal, Dr. Mark Merle. From the Woodlands High School ninth grade campus, Mitchell Alton Wicker, Dr. Chris Povich, Principal. <laughs> From Washington Junior High School, Richard Matlock, Mr. Hartwell, Hartwell Brown, Principal.
And finally, from Wilkinson Elementary School, Carol Castillo, Victor Ewer, Principal. President, husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, each of these individuals is an ambassador for the district by demonstrating an unwavering commitment to the children, the parents, and the staff members of Conroe Independent School District, and we thank them. Hey, what if? If we could, if we could ask y'all to squeeze in and we'll get a picture, okay? And then, if you would, we'd like to shake all your hands, if you don't mind making a spin around there. Can you get a picture? I guess we, I guess we need to sit in, huh? Thank you, Dr. Wood. Again, thank you. And, and, and you don't have to walk down that line, ma'am. Yeah, bless I your heart. To. I it's, 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 it's an honor. We appreciate each of you. Thank you for all you Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 I like the way for all you do. I was, I was laughing in the picture when you kicked that thing out across. <laughs> so, so if I ruin the picture, if I ruin the picture. Thank you again. Thank you again, my friend. I appreciate all you do. Thanks again, brother. Keep it up, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate the passion, man. We appreciate it. My most memorable time, my son. I think we drove those those boats crazy. Appreciate it. I didn't see one movie during the break. You're fine, man. You switch your. That's good, it looks Item 2B, citizen participation. Ms. Ferris, is anyone registered to address the board? Very good. Uh, the next 30 minutes has been designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up uh, to address the board in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted the complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level and prompt an equitable uh, resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies provided provided that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, a person may appeal the uh, administrative decision to the board properly posted agenda item. Copies of the district complaint policies can be found on the district's website. Those of you who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their presentation. Delegations are five or more. Uh, must appoint one representative to prevent, present their views to the board. 
Mrs. Ferris, please call the first person who is signed to, up to address the board, please. Mark McCloy. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, President Husbands, Member of School Board, Dr. Stockton. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mark McCloy. I am President of TSDA Conroe, uh, members, members organization, teachers organization. Um, I, I come here, uh, I know about the complaint uh, policy. I come here just to uh, voice the, my, my members' concerns. I also go through Dr. Gibson and Dr. Knoll. Uh, which I got to give a shout out to them. They helped tremendously uh, with addressing concerns on uh, Senate Bill 2033 on no grades less than a 50. And they were very helpful in that. And I, I got to give them props because they were very attentive. I sent the email, they sent me right back. So uh, kudos to those guys. Um, our concerns is uh, paperwork, adding, uh, adding requirements without taking anything away. Uh, currently, teachers are, are made to do agendas and then do what we call teaks and then elks and write it on the board, uh, explain it to the kids, and then we go to Edgeforia, put it in there. Uh, that's a redundant system. Uh, most of my, my members are feeling a little overwhelmed. We don't mind doing a little extra work as long as you take something away. Uh, you know, give us, get, tell us to do something, just take a little bit away. And, uh, and that's what they, they're asking for. Uh, the next thing is um, redundant paperwork, lesson plans being put in in several different places. Kilbo, Kilgore and vocabulary levels being, being asked to give when state, state requires just a minimum lesson plan. Uh, let's see. That's about it that I have here, except for I was today was another school choice uh, mentioned today at the uh, state level. And uh, we know, TSDA Conroe knows as well as y'all, that school choice means school vouchers. And uh, we, uh, we are very concerned because money away from our public school, our public education, is money away from our kids. And uh, we just ask for y'all to please keep an eye on that and, uh, you know, join us if you have to, to make sure that comes out in a positive way. Um, that's all I have. Thank you very much for your time. But Mark, before you sit down, um, if when you have specific examples of redundancies, if you'll get that to Dr. Hines, we'll take a look at it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, it, if, uh, if nobody objects, I'd like to move items uh, 9, A, B, and C forward at this time. Dr. Stockton, 9A. So moved. Uh, we're good. Uh, naming the principal of Cox Intermediate School. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as you've heard me say before, the most important thing that I do is recommend uh, principals to you for your consideration for approval. Uh, the principals lead the schools, work with our wonderful teachers, and and, and influence our students on a daily basis. So I take this very seriously, and tonight I'm gonna to make three recommendations uh, that I feel very good about. The first one is at Cox Intermediate School, and I'd like to recommend Debbie Spoon, who's currently an assistant principal there at Cox. In fact, um, opened the building up along with Dr. with Mr. Sharples uh, several years ago. <clears throat> Mr. President, I still move approval. Second. Second. Any discussion? Not all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. And it passes unanimous. Congratulations. President, husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, thank you for this opportunity. Um, as uh, Dr. Stockton said, I opened, helped Mr. Sharples open up the building with a team of teachers several years ago. Um, so uh, continuing um, at that school as principal is very exciting. 
Uh, I actually started my journey at CISD as a student. Um, I am a product of CISD and the first graduating class of McCullough High School. Um, so I'm very proud of that. I also started in CISD as a paraprofessional. So um, being named a principal is um, very surreal. Thank you for that. Um, I, I have some uh, members of my family here today that I would like to introduce to you. Um, I have my husband, Jeff Spoon, my son, Carson Spoon, and my daughter, Keely Spoon. Right. They're the two, uh, my two uh, youngest children of seven. Thank you. I also would like to um, take the opportunity to thank a couple of people because I did not get here all by myself. Um, I, um, I want to thank all the teachers, um, the parents, and the children, the students at Tom Cox Intermediate for their support and encouragement over the, uh, the last couple of weeks. I also want to thank um, Mr. Sharples for taking a chance on me and hiring me as an assistant principal and um, encouraging me along the way. And I also would like to thank um, Shelly Winkler, who I worked with as an assistant principal at Vogel Intermediate and has taught me that um, the most important thing is building relationships with um, students and parents and our staff. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Item, Dr. Stockton, uh, item 9D, naming of the principal for Armstrong Elementary School. Okay, this time I want to um, recommend to you Patricia Thacker. Patricia is currently the interim principal at Armstrong and has served in that position uh, during the school year. Good. So move. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. I have a motion is second. Um, any discussion? All those favor signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, like, sign. Congratulations, Ms. Thacker. President, husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, thank you so much for recommending me to become the next principal at Armstrong Elementary. I'm extremely excited and honored for this opportunity. I also want to thank Dr. Gibson and Ms. Winkler for supporting and believing in me as interim principal this year. Um, I, Armstrong has held a place in my heart these last five years, and I'm excited to continue with to working with the students, the parents, the community, and the staff at Armstrong. Um, I want to introduce you to my family who's here, and without them, none of this would be possible. <laughs> My mom, my husband, Justin Thacker, my daughter, Phoebe, and my son, Cash. So, um, and then I also want to, to thank my staff who's here to support because they're a wonderful staff. So Absolutely. thank you again for this opportunity. Congratulations. Good job. Thank you. Dr. Uh, Adam 9C, naming the principal at Ford Elementary School. At this time, I'd like to recommend Paola Gorman to be the next principal at Ford Elementary School. She's currently an assistant principal at Ford. And do I hear a motion? So moved. A second. And a second. All those, uh, any discussion? Well. <laughs> okay, like I said, any important discussion from, from any, no. <laughs> No, I'm just uh, hard. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like, sign. Congratulations. Thank 
Good evening, uh, President and Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. Um, I want to thank you for this opportunity. Uh, it's a privilege to be here tonight, and I'm very humble and honored to be named the principal of Four Elementary. Um, Four Elementary is my home, and that's where my heart and my soul is. I, I want to thank my family who is here, my husband, Brian Gorman, uh, my son, Grant Gorman, my son, Michael <laughs> Gorman. Mm -hmm. um, I also have my parents, uh, my siblings, my father and mother-in-law present. Um, I would like to thank my four family because through um, all the changes, they have been very supportive and they're always working. They're always doing, you know, um, their best at what they do. And I, I feel blessed to serve that community and that school. Um, again, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Congratulations. He deserved it. <laughs> Good job. Stockton, it's, it, it strikes me how blessed we are at the talent we have in this room, and, and beyond this room, that is. But uh, I, know, I know you're very pleased tonight. Uh, item three, uh, consent agenda. Does anybody uh, wish to take any item off to consider individually? If not, I would consider a motion. Motion approved. Accept. Second. 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 All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Item 4A, 2015-16 calendar approval. Dr. Stockton. At this time, I'll ask Dr. Hines to come back to the podium and introduce the uh, recommended calendar. President, husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, <clears throat> the 2015-2016 draft calendars, uh, we had A and B, and they were both posted on the uh, CISD website. They went up about late November, and they remained um, up, and through, up through late January uh, for review and comments. The district level planning and decision-making committee studied the comments and suggestions received from the staff, parents, community, uh, and they respectfully recommend tonight for your approval draft calendar A as the 2015-2016 uh, school calendar. Uh, the calendar reflects just a few things I'll point out. One is the first day of school is August 24th. Of course, we can't start any earlier than that, and that's that's just a requirement. Um, we also, uh, it, the calendar has 178 days of instruction. Uh, 79 days fall in the first semester and 99 in the second semester, which is the same as this year. Um, in fact, this calendar pretty much is a version of this year's calendar with next year's dates. Uh, the last day of school would be June the 2nd. There is one week of uh, holiday for Thanksgiving. It's November the 23rd to the 27th. There will be a two-week winter break. It's December 21st to January 4th. Uh, the first semester would end at the um, winter break. Uh, spring break would be the week of March 14 through 18. There's two early release days, and there's two inclement weather days on the calendar. And we ask for your approval. Mr. Here. President, I so move approval. I have a motion. I hear second. Second. Uh, having seconded any discussion. Not all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. <coughs> motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hines. Uh, item 5A, uh, administration approval of 2015 District uh, Facilities Planning Committee. Dr. Stockton. From 2003 to 2013, CISD has gained approximately 16,000 students. To meet the needs related to this growth, the com community passed two bond referendums, one in 2004 and one in 2008. From these two referendums, 14 new schools were built along with numerous major additions. Additionally, CISD has built an elementary school and completed several other major additions out of fund balance. CISD continues to experience heavy growth and today's enrollment of 56,450 is approximately 1,500 students more than this time last year. With growth in mind, in August of 2014, the Board of Trustees approved the agreement to hire population and survey analysts, PASA, 
to complete a demographic study for CISD. That study has been recently completed and is now on the district website. I will caution you, though, before you hit print, it's about 380 pages long. Um, the study indicates that our heavy growth pattern will continue with expected growth of between 1,400 and 1,700 students per year for the next five years and increasing even greater after that. Tonight, I'm asking the board to approve the 2015 Facility Planning Committee for the purpose of, one, reviewing the district's projected growth and instructional needs for the next three to five years, and two, making a recommendation to the Board of Trustees to address those needs while impacting the tax rate as minimally as possible. If approved, the committee will meet beginning in March with the goal of bringing a recommendation to the Board of Trustees in June in anticipation of a November bond referendum. The Facility Planning Committee is comprised of citizens representing various geographic areas in CISD, and, and I do notice that at least one of our committee recommended committee members is in the audience, Mr. Joe Michaels. And at this time, I seek your approval. You have the list before you. The list is also on the overhead. Oh, motion approved. Okay, I second. <laughs> and a second. Any, any discussion? I mean, Joe's out there. Anybody want to take a shot? Okay. <laughs> I, I say that uh, tongue-in-cheek, Joe, uh, in, in discussion, I will just say thank you. For many years, you've served uh, this district and this community uh, with a passion, and we thank you, sir. Absolutely. Good to see you. you uh, uh, all those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign, and the motion passes. And thank you again for serving, Joe, and thank Dr. Stockton. Thank you. Item 5B. Select project delivery method for new construction projects, girls' locker room renovations at the Woodlands High School, track and tennis court life cycle renovations, new high school and Oak Ridge feeder zone. Dr. Stockton. Easy Foster, please. Easy. President, husbands, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure tonight to bring forward a request to approve a construction delivery method, which is a contracting method by which we procure construction within the district. Um, we recommend this morning uh, that we select or approve the construction manager at risk delivery method for the following new construction projects. A new high school in the Oak Ridge feeder zone, the Willens High School girls locker rooms renovations, and tractor and tennis court life cycle renovations. <clears throat> the district recommends this delivery method because we've used it successfully for, for many years. We feel like it is the the way that we get the best value, the best bang for our dollar for these construction projects. At this point, <clears throat> the district believes uh, this delivery method to be the, the way that we can keep track of our rising construction costs on the current market uh, and plan for projects as we move forward in the future. Once this delivery method has been determined by the board, uh, the district, uh, my department, will prepare and request for qualifications for two-step processes related to selection of the CMR risk. Step one being a request for qualifications where the contractors turn in their qualifications, bonding information, insurance information, and essentially a resume that describes their ability to procure the work or to prosecute the work that we we're asking them to do. Uh, step two would be uh, selecting a short list, uh, depending on how many respondents we get to this request for qualifications, interviewing those and say, taking their pricing uh, as part of step two. The pricing would be for fee percentage and general conditions percentage based on the budgets established in these RFQs. We anticipate uh, returning to the board with uh, contractor selections for these projects uh, in April, at the April board meeting, so that we can uh, aggressively work with uh, these selected contractors to bring GMPs for those projects in for work. Um, this process is only to approve the delivery method. I want to make that clear. This is just our, uh, you approving our ability to go out and, and, process, and select contractors to work with. At this time, I'd like to ask for your approval. So a motion. A motion. Do I hear a second? And any discussion? I, I just have a question. Sure. I just want to make sure. We've, we've done the project delivery method before in this district several times, as I understand it, right? Absolutely. As long as it's been a, 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 a legislatively legal way for us to procure work that it has been our preferred method so so is this something we have to approve each year i'm trying to understand what's the length of our approval that kind of thing well currently or if we've done it in the past why, yeah, why does it need to come back well currently we're working uh 
within the district review how we procured work over the years. Uh, the last time we brought a, a selection request like this was prior to the 2008 bond election. And we selected CM at risk for a package of work. And now those bond funds are nearing their end. Okay. And that work has been done or is in progress of being done. So now we're looking forward to work that is either funded outside of that bond, outside those selections, or uh, looking forward, you'll see the new high school, which is looking forward to the next bond. We're starting early on that so that we can be on top of it. So presently then, this project delivery method is just for these projects that have been outlined here? Correct. Okay. Great. Thank you. And you will come back to us, assuming we, it's a bond, assuming we, you know, approve a bond for for a certain number of projects, you'll come back to us for those other projects for a, for a, for a delivery method to those? Yes, sir. Other than these, which will be a part of it? Yes. That is correct. These, we just need to get a head start on these. That is what we're asking for. Very good. Motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you much, Mr. Foster. Uh, item 5C, approve uh, A133 construction agreement and guaranteed maximum price. Dr. Stockton, Mr. E. Foster. I'll turn it over to Mr. Foster again. <clears throat> Again, at this point, uh, it's very, very similar. This is for an actual project, but this is coming from uh, contractor selections that were made as part of the 2008 bond referendum. The, uh, we're asking you to approve a guaranteed maximum price amendment for the Mitchell Intermediate Life Cycle Roof Project. And uh, the, the title doesn't encapsulate the entire work. What we're doing is updating, as a matter of life cycle, all the waterproofing, the roof, uh, the membranes, the coatings, the, the window seals, things of that nature relate to Mitchell Intermediate. At this point, uh, bring, forward, uh, bring forward for your approval uh, the guaranteeing max maximum price. Uh, it's a contract and an amendment. Uh, the amendment being the guaranteeing maximum price for Brookstone to be our CM at risk to uh, uh, pursue this work. As I described, Mitchell Intermediate, this is a life cycle roof project. Uh, and uh, part of this is to delegate uh, Dr. Stockton's ability to uh, Sign the, sign the contract or execute the contract documents and bring forward. Brookstone has been selected the same risk because they've prosecuted work like this before. You recall their last project with us was the uh, life cycle replacement of the bricks and masonry at Travis. Mm -hmm. So they are 100% capable of, of a uh, complex and uh, well orchestrated project. The district uh, has already uh, advertised, uh, received bids for this work at Brookstone's office. Uh, we've been through a, a, a lengthy study process and uh, feel confident recommending for you this project with a guaranteed maximum price tonight. It's important to note, I mean, just as a matter of housekeeping, uh, by approving this project, we are approving them as the CMRS, uh, or we're approving the delivery method as CMRS, we're approving Brookstone as the CMRS, and we're approving the guaranteed maximum price with Brookstone to do this work. At this time, I'd like to ask for your approval. Are your motion? So moved. I'll second. Second. Any discussion? I have a question. Yeah. Question? How old is the roof? Uh, the roof on Mitchell uh, for a majority, well, all the roofs are their original roofs. Mitchell has had one addition uh, in its life, uh, but we are replacing the entire roofing system. So when we're done with this project, the entire roof will be on the same life cycle. Uh, so, but the original roof was built in 1991, I believe. So it is 24 years old at this point. And what's the typical life? I think our, our typical life cycle is 20 years. So we're doing better. That's great. <laughs> yeah. What type of roof is it? The, uh, the roof that we're proposing in this guaranteed maximum price is a two-ply mod bit roof with a white cap sheet, which is uh, from, from recommendations from our design designer PBK and, and our other design teams would be what would be, uh, if you want to coin it, be the gold standard for roofing in the district. So it's a complete tear-off and a complete replacement with a uh, with a modified bitumen system. Now, if it was built in 1991, that is an older style roof that's on there. Absolutely. And therefore, right now, if we put this two ply on there, we can come back 20 years from now, put the third ply on there and get another extended life out of it, maybe 20 or so. Yes, sir. I mean, and but you can't do that with the roof you've got on there. Uh, the roof we have on it is a gravel ballasted roof. It's a it's a basically a tar built up roof. Um, so in order to do anything to it, you have to remove all or as much of all of the gravel you can. 
Uh, one of the other benefits of doing a complete tear off and put back is we're also increasing the R value. Uh, if you can imagine the energy code at the time it was built is not the energy code we're measured by today. So we're able to increase the R value of that roof uh, commensurate with the energy codes of today. Simply because it's white versus dark. No, it, it's, it's, an, it's an additional uh, insulation. roof insulation. And, and then we put a white cap on top of it to increase the reflectivity. Any other questions? How well do those uh, have we have those roofs proven been proven in the district? We have. Do we have any uh, other schools with them? Uh, we have a number of different roof types in the district. Uh, I would say three quarters of them are mod bit two ply mod bit roofs. Uh, over time, they've graduated from black to gray to white, as far as the top color. Mm -hmm. But we have a number of them in the district, and they overall perform very well. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I should probably know this, but what is the maximum price amendment? It's the guaranteed maximum price amendment. Yeah, what's, what is the price? Uh, I, unfortunately, I gave all three of those documents to Ms. Gladys. Otherwise, I'd read My the computer's not up. Directly. Yeah, a couple dollars. Huh? Uh, and I apologize for not having that number written down myself. That's some change. I got your checkbook. <laughs> We used to have books about this thick, and we could flip to that page, but we're so technologically inclined these days. Does anybody need to hear that before we move on? I would. Fine if you do. Just as well. Okay. Page put on there. We'll wait. I think it's important. Dan's got the money. <laughs> Dan, Dan, know, Dan knew how much it was well, right Dan on. Just like watch Denzel, you yeah. Thank you, Dan. Uh, <laughs> our, the guaranteed maximum price for this contract is $1,315,297. Okay. Any further questions or discussion? All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. And then item passes. Uh, Item 5D, uh, capital improvements update, Mr. Foster. Up, oh, Dr. Stockton, Mr. Foster, both. Again, I, I, at this time, I, I would like to show you and give you an update for the capital improvements we do have under construction within the district. I'm uh, starting with the Oak Ridge High School ninth grade campus. Uh, this project, I'm proud to report, has showed some progress. Uh, we had some sunshine over the last month since the last board meeting. So you can see the front entry, the, the new curb appeal for that, that building coming together in this picture. Uh, as well, the interior of the, of the program, you remember a uh, board meeting or two ago, we approved the purchase of the furniture for this, mm -hmm. uh, for this space. So uh, the admin and conference furniture is, is in progress. So it will be delivered in the not too distant future. Uh, what you're looking at now is the exterior of the uh, classroom wing, which has the, uh, the typical classrooms and the uh, art labs and the uh, culinary lab. The inside of this pro uh, building is, is also coming together. Uh, what I have not showed you are pictures of the uh, science wing because it's, it's essentially in the same shape as the classroom wing, wing is from this side. The interior walls are coming together, the interior systems, the plumbing, the air conditioning, that, things of that nature are going in as we speak. This project is on schedule. It is scheduled to turn over 100%, so all the classrooms uh, ready for use at the end of the summer. Oak Ridge Elementary is a project we approved at the last board meeting, so it is just now uh, just now in the mobilizing stages. If you've driven by there in the recent past, you've seen the work going on to expand the parking in the front of the school. Uh, you've also, uh, what you can't see from the street or where we're adding the additional space to house the the more efficient and larger mechanical systems that are going in. You're looking at the excavation for the uh, foundations for one of the mechanical rooms. Uh, we're building two at that campus. This is the uh, area where the second mechanical room will be will be constructed. So you can see the barrier protection. Uh, interestingly enough, the contractor and the principal have worked together so that the inside of that wall is being decorated by the students. So it's not uh, it's a, an art project for the for the kids there. That is the update for the work we have in progress. Thank you very much, Ms. Foster. Can I comment real quick? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I've been at both the Oak Ridge Ninth Campus and Oak Ridge Elementary Campus recently, and y'all are doing a phenomenal job, and it was really awesome to see. So, Appreciate thank that. Thank you. I'll pass that on to our contractors. Thank you very much. Um, item 6A, financial reports, Dr. Stock. 
Uh, Mr. Rice, will you come pr provide those reports, please? Good evening, President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. I'm here tonight to present the financial statements for the district for the month of January. These statements will include a general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we're going to look at this evening is the balance sheet for the month. The balance sheet includes the assets, liabilities, and fund balances for the district. If you look under the assets section, cash and investments, uh, currently $287 million. We look at the detail of that, you can see the majority of our funds in the general fund are invested. We have $1.2 million of bank deposits, $140 million in our pools, close to $100 million in our Capital One Now account. In our longer term uh, investments, the majority of them are treasury notes of about $46.5 million in there. This is the time of the year that we like to start tracking our uh, tax collections. They're, they're starting to roll in. And we compared where we were last year to make sure that we're on track. And as you can see, we're slightly above where we were in previous years, so, so we feel good about that. The next statement is our income statement for the month. The income statement is our revenues and expenditures for the district. The revenues uh, consist of local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. If we look at the largest uh, area, which is local and intermediate, we can see the detail on that, and as you can see in the general fund and debt service, the majority of the revenues come from taxes. Uh, in food service, that's from food sales, and in self-funded insurance is from premium contributions. Mm -hmm. We can also look at our total expenditures. We have that broken down in the functional areas for you for each of the funds. Self-funded insurance, uh, for the year we've had total revenues of $14.6 million. Total expenses of $15 million for revenues under expenses of $420,000. If we look at the first two months, we were minus $750,000 right out of the gate, but we had rollover uh, rollout from the previous plan. So now our new plan's in place, and we're going to continue to watch that and see uh, see how that progresses with the new with the new plan structure. Our uh, wellness centers uh, participation has been good uh, through January. We've had 2,400. Uh, 24 at the Oak Ridge Center. We've had 929 visitors to the Conroe Center for a total of 3,353. We're averaging about 671 a month at our, at our center, so so good good participation. Our investments for the month. We ended uh, December with 300 and roughly $47 million invested at the end of December. January, $419 million. The increase, like I said, taxes are starting to roll in. The WAM of the pools in the Capital One is one day, and those are yielding about 16 basis points. Our longer term investments, our treasury notes, uh, the WAM is 657 days, yielding a little over 65 basis points. The WAM of our total com uh, complete portfolio is 72 days, yielding a little over 21 basis points. And of course, our 90 day T bill, which is our benchmark. Is just 1.3 basis points, so it's so almost zero there. And I promised fireworks last time. So <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Rice, any questions? Appreciate you, sir. Uh, we need to for executive session tonight, uh, item 10A, uh, except for review of uh, TASB Local District uh, Update 101 and revisions to local policy C, V, and E, I, F. Uh, Mrs. Gladys, please. Thank you, Dr. Stockton, Mr. <coughs> Husbands. Uh, you all have received the marked up local policies in your packet and vantage points explaining the change. There's just one thing I want to point out. And those, those documents do a really good job of explaining. This isn't an earth shattering update at all. But there are, um, we are recommending changes to CV, and that would kind of change the answer to a question that you asked earlier, Mr. Husbands. We're recommending that construction manager at risk be our preferred method, uh, method for construction delivery. Um, that will keep us from having to come back to the board and ask that we select that each time, which speeds up the process. If our planning construction department would like to suggest another method to you, then that would come back to the board for your approval. So that would be the exception? 
Correct. Okay. Any other delivery method would be the exception to that. And so we're, we're recommending that change in CV. I think it'll streamline the process a little bit more. It could be cumbersome. Anybody have any other questions on any other policy, local policies? Do we need to approve this? No, it's just administration. really administration's looking at the recommended changes and updating procedures. And so when we come back in okay. March, I'll ask for adoption. Of okay. This. Well, thank, thank you for your explanation. If anybody has any questions, please. I don't have any questions at this time. I, I just actually just received this yesterday, so I may come back with some questions later on, but I'll take time. Great. Okay. Uh, item 10B, consider land purchase in Oak Ridge. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Gladys, please. Do you know we've been working on procuring a piece of property in the Oak Ridge Fiesta, Peterson. We are very pleased that we've um, reached a, a contract and present that for you for approval this evening. Mr. President, I move approval of the contract as presented. Second. And I have a second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Good. <clears throat> Thank you. <coughs> and uh, item 10C, level three grievance hearing. Ms. Kim Holt. Um, At this time, um, I will uh, I will serve as a presiding officer. Uh, this meeting, the Calder Independent School District Board of Trustees is convened on February 17, 2015. A quorum of the board is present, including the following members: Melanie Bush, Scott Kidd, Ray Sanders, John Husbands, Atron Williams, and Skeeter Hubert. The purpose of this item on the board's agenda is to hear the complaint and appeal of former employee Kim Holt in accordance with local board policy DGBA. Ms. Holt's complaint relates to her termination from employment. Therefore, under the Texas Government Code Section 551.004, uh, this meeting will be held in closed session because the hearing involves a complaint relating to the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public employee. At this time, this meeting of the Counter Independent School District Board of Trustees is adjourned into executive session under Texas Government Code Section 551.074 of the Open Meetings Act. Everyone not associated with the hearing should leave the room. The board will take no action while in executive session. The time is now 6.50.